Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a review lesson on factoring polynomials. This lesson is designed for my Algebra 2 honors class who has seen factoring before. So I'm just going to review some of the techniques that you've learned before. And uh, what I'd like you to do is take notes on the examples that I'm doing and then try the other ones on your own for homework. There are seven factoring techniques, GCF, DOTS, SOC, DOC, FAST, NOBS, PST, and grouping. And I'm going to give an example or two of each of these, and I'd like you to try the other ones by yourself. So we're going to start with GCF, which stands for Greatest Common Factor. This is perhaps the most important factoring technique, because if you can remove something common from all of your terms, you're going to make the remaining expression much easier to work with. So as my example, I'm going to do number two for you. And when I look at number two, I notice that there are three terms. And what's common to the three terms is the expression x minus 2y. So I'm going to go ahead and divide that out or factor that out. So I'm going to write it off to the side. Now when I remove it, there's going to be things that are left over. Since I removed it from three terms, there has to be three things that are left over when I do remove it. So the first thing is, take the first term and ask yourself, when I take out the x minus 2y, and something important here is, is the fact that to take out means to divide. So if we go back to example two and we think of a squared times x minus 2y divided by x minus 2y, the expression x minus 2y is going to cancel out and you're going to be left with just a squared. Now if we move to the middle term where we have a negative b times x minus 2y and we divide by x minus 2y, we're left with just minus b. And then if we go to the third term where we have negative expression x minus 2y and we divide by x minus 2y, we're left with negative 1. So what we've just done in this problem is we've factored out the greatest common factor. Now you'll notice that the first factor was written in parentheses and the second one was in brackets. I could go ahead and as a final step just write both of these with parentheses. There's no need to have the different types of grouping symbols. So just to review some key concepts from this one example, GCF, greatest common factor, what I want you to realize is that if you can take something out of a multi-termed expression, it's going to make the remaining expression much easier to work with because it's been simplified. And the other thing that I want you to realize is that when you take something out, that expression take out means to divide. So I've done number two for you as my example. I'd like you to try number one by yourself and fill that out. So maybe pause the video now and, re and resume it when you're ready to go on. Okay, this next slide, we're going to review the factoring technique DOTS, which is an acronym that stands for Difference of Two Squares. If an expression can be factored using the dots technique, it subscribes to a certain template. And that template looks like this. And I'm going to write it in the bottom right-hand corner. I'd like you to write this down as well. If an expression looks like a squared minus b squared, it can be factored in the following way. There are going to be two binomials, and the binomials are going to be a plus b, a minus b. Now the question might be, how do we know if something is a candidate for the dots technique? Well, the d in dots stands for difference. So in between your terms, you need to have a subtraction symbol. And the terms that surround the subtraction need to be things that you can take the square root of. So we'll call that square rootable. Okay, let's take a look at example three. Example three says 4a squared minus 81b squared. Well, the first thing that I notice is that there is a subtraction in between my terms. This means it is a difference. Now, I look at the terms that surround the subtraction symbol. Can I take the square to the term on the left? The answer is yes. Can I take the square to the term on the right? The answer is also yes. So I'm going to start by creating two binomials. What is the square root of 4a squared? Well, the answer is 2a. So that's going to go in the first position of each binomial. What is the square root of 81b squared? The answer is 9b. That's going to go in the second position of each binomial. Now I have to put the signs in. One's going to get a plus, and one's going to get a minus. So we're done. We've just factored using the dots method. Now many students will ask, does it have to go plus minus when you put the signs in? And the answer is no. You could put minus plus if you'd like. Multiplication is commutative, so the order does not matter. Let's skip to example five. Number five is really kind of challenging. 
I'd like you to put a star by it because I'd like you to take an extra long look at this when we're done. You might see it again. Number five is also a difference of two squares, but it's disguised. Let's start by looking at the sign in between our terms. It's a minus, so we know it's going to be a difference. Now let's look at our first term off to the left, which is nine. Is that something you could take the square root of? It is. The square root of nine is three. Now let's look at the right-hand term. The right-hand term is where the trouble lies. The right-hand term is a chunk squared. Can you take the square root of a chunk squared? Think about what that square root might be. Okay, let's start. I'm going to start by setting up my two binomials, but this time I'm going to use brackets. Okay, what's the square root of 9? Well, it's 3, and that's going to occupy the first position in each set of brackets. Now I'll move to the second term. What is the square root of chunk squared? Well, the square root of chunk squared, of course, is just chunk. But because it is a chunk, it needs to be kept together, so we need to keep it inside of parentheses. And again, one will take a plus and one will take a minus, the order of which does not matter. Okay, but we're not done yet. We're probably going to be expected to clean up the inside of each of these brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and clear parentheses by distributing the negative through or the positive through, depending on which bracket I'm looking at. So our first bracket is going to leave us with 3 minus 3x minus 2. Our second bracket is going to leave us with 3 plus 3x plus 2. And my final step will be to clean both of those brackets up. And now I can switch back to parentheses. So cleaning up the first set of brackets, I have 1 minus 3x. And the second set of brackets is 3x plus 5. So we've now just used the difference of two squares method on number 9. So in summary, you're going to use the difference of two squares method when your expression falls into the template a squared minus b squared. And the result is going to be a plus b, a minus b, and it doesn't matter whether the plus or minus comes first. I'd like you to try number four before you go on, so you might want to pause the video at this time. The next type of factoring that we're going to look at are the SOC and DOC techniques. These are acronyms that stand for sum of cubes and difference of cubes. And I'm going to write the factoring pattern for these at the bottom of the page. I'd like you to do the same thing. SOC would be the sum of cubes, or a cubed plus b cubed. If you see an algebraic expression in this format, it's going to factor as follows. It's going to be a binomial times a trinomial. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the, the cube root of the first term, which would be a. You're going to take the cube root of the second term, which would be b. You're going to take the first result, and you're going to square it. You're going to multiply the two results together. In the, and put that result in the middle. And then you're going to take the last result and you're going to square it. Now I'm going to go in and put our signs. And this, the, there's an acronym, there's a little trick to help us remember the placement of the signs, and that acronym is SOAP. And that acronym stands for Same, Opposite, Always Positive. So our problem started off as an addition problem, so I'm going to stay the same, which would be plus. Opposite would mean change it to minus and then always positive. The doc template looks as follows. This stands for difference of cubes and looks like a cubed minus b cubed. If an algebraic expression subscribes to this template, it's almost the same thing. We're going to end up getting a binomial times a trinomial again. Once again, we're going to take the cube root of the first term, which is a. We're going to take the cube root of the second term, which is b. We're going to take the first result and we're going to square it, which would be a squared. We're going to take the product of both of our results and write that in the middle. And then we're going to take our second result and square it, and we're going to write b squared at the end. And because we're going to use SOAP, which stands for same, opposite, always positive, we're going to start with the same sign, minus, opposite would be plus, and then always positive. Now, a special note. This trinomial at the end, it seems very tempting to want to factor that even further, but it can't. You can never go further with that that is prime. So don't be tempted to factor that more. That's prime. And the same thing down here too. This is also prime. So let's take a look at example six. Example six is a candidate for the doc technique. And the reason I know that is because it's a difference. And both the first and last terms are perfect cubes. It's something that I could take the cube root of pretty easily. 
So I'm going to set up my binomial times my trinomial. Now, the cube root of 8x cubed is 2x. The cube root of 1 is just 1. Now, the first result squared is 4x squared. The product of, the, of both results gets written in the middle, which will be 2x. And the last result squared is going to be 1. And because we use SOAP, same, opposite, always positive. Let's try number 7. Number 7 is a sum of cubes. I know this because there's a plus in between, and both the first and last terms are things that I can take the cube root of. So I'm going to set up my template by placing parentheses for a binomial and a trinomial. Now, the cube root of 64y to the 6th is 4y squared. The cube root of 27x cubed is 3x. Our first result squared, think about that for a moment, is 16y to the 4th. The product of our results is 12xy squared, and that gets written in the middle. And our last result squared is going to be 9x squared. And because we use SOAP, we start with same, opposite, always positive. Let's go to our last problem number 8. This is a difference of cubes. There's a minus in between, and both the first and last terms are perfect cubes. So I'm going to set up my template, writing down room for a binomial times a trinomial. Now, the cube root of 1,000 is 10, and the cube root of 343z cubed is 7z. Our first result squared is 100. The product of both of our results is 70z. And our second result squared is 49z squared. Because we use SOAP, we're going to start with same, opposite, always positive. And to be clear, it's going to be tempting to want to factor this more, but it's always prime. So don't be tempted to try to factor that further, because you can't.